All right, welcome back to another video. This video is going to continue on th from the last one, which was about uh, substation primary equipment. This video is going to concentrate on secondary equipment. Now, just before I get into it, this is not an in-depth video in different types of protection schemes. This is just to show you or illustrate how they connect in with the primary equipment. All right, if you haven't seen the last video, I will link it in the cards right now otherwise let's get into it so if you have seen the last video you'll see that this substation has changed a bit so what I've done is I've added another bus on the 330 side and I've added some extra substations in both on the high voltage side and the medium voltage side alright so what you can see I've gone ahead and added in a transmission line and another substation now the substation on the left was the original substation from the last video and then what I did was I copied it and reversed it to create another one on the other end. I have three different types of relays on this transmission line. I've got a synchro check, circuit breaker fail, uh, control, alarms, trip close relay. That, that's called a circuit breaker management relay. Now so what synchronization is, is uh, when you have a long, or very long line and if you've got a voltage source on one end of the line and one on this end of the line. What you can find that happens is they're either at a different frequency or not much of a different frequency, but it can, and a different position of the voltage vectors. Now, what you want to make sure is they're the same. When it closes on, uh, you, then you can synchronize the network. So back in the olden days, what they used to do is they used to have a synchronization meter and they used to watch it move and they used to wait for them to the two sources to be the same and then they used to close on. So that's the idea behind that. What else you can see, I've got a distance protection relay. Now that's often called an impedance relay. You can see I've got its connection. I've got the green, green is CT connection, orange is VT connection, and brown is control. For synchronization check, circuit breaker management relay, I've got a second control stick, a control signal. Now that control signal, if this one couldn't act, it would send a, a um, trip signal off to the other relay, the circuit breaker management relay, and that would also try and trip. So the reason why I've got this one from the bus is because if anything happened, I want to have, uh, always want my voltage on that uh, relay. So if this was if this was circuit breaker was open, or this isolator was open, that VT may have no volts on it. Now in this case, for this relay, I want volts on my relay impedance relay looks uh, at the current and the volts and it works out what the impedance is. Now so when you have uh, low current for example, so the current that you would expect to see on the line, you would have a really high impedance. Now once you have really high current or higher than expected, you would have a lower impedance. Now if there was a fault that would short circuit or bypass the load on the system, creating a very high current, leaving only the impedance of the line left in the circuit, the impedance relay would kick in. Now, so what that means is we know what the impedance of the line is. So say if the line is uh, 10 ohms, then we could program in the line impedance into the relay. So then we'd know when anything's less than 10 ohms, for example, we can go. But what you find in impedance relays is you have things called zones. Now, for example, the first zone is often 80% of the line. Now, having multiple zones allows for the discrimination in tripping, preventing everything from the energy source, i.e. the generator, from tripping all the way along. So we don't want that. We want the fault to be the small lo location as possible. We want to trip the least amount of things as possible to contain the fault. Alright, so I'll have a future video on impedance relays that will cover all these in more in depth because it's quite uh, a big, big, uh, complex subject impedance relays. So we'll cover that later on with more detail. And they will go pretty much all the relays. I'll try and make more videos in depth about each one. Alright, so now I've got a current differential. So you can see well, that's also got a CT into it. It's got an action coming out of it and it's also got a this blue that's going to represent communications. So this 
current differential relay is communication assisted. So what that means is I have a fiber optic connection across the top of the transmission lines to the other side. Now, uh, what that's doing is it's looking at the current going in and the current going out. Now, if they don't equal, it means there's a bypass, right? There's a fault, right? And then shield trip. Now, why do we have two systems in place that look like they do exactly the same thing? Well, you always have a backup. You have a primary system and a backup system. One of them should theoretically get the fault and trip it off. The last thing you want to do is leave the fault in service going. So that's the transmission line. Right, now moving further along, uh, we've got the bus system. Now, what you can see is uh, between the circuit breakers, I have a common sort of wire that runs between everything. Now, so what that would allow is, say if one of these lines were out, uh, you would be able to go through this this wire and put it onto the other transformer so you could feed both transformers from the one line that sort of thing so it, it allows you know better switching you need to protect this so anything could happen you know uh, bird strike you know animal possum something could climb the line and trip it or you'd want it to trip it uh, so to be able to see that what you do is you'll have CTs on every point of entry into the circuit. Now, uh, they're inward facing. So what goes comes into one gets cancelled by the one on the other side. So the current always equals zero. So you'll have A plus B plus C plus D plus E, for example. Well, so each letter being, say, a different contribution. Now, if one is 10 and one is negative 10, it equals zero. So the whole idea is if a current gets develops in that cir circuit, then it would send a trip signal and uh, open every single breaker on that bus. So that would be everything in and everything out. Uh, so that's how sort of bus protection works. Again, I'm gonna have another video on high impedance bus prot uh, to explain it a bit more in detail, because again, that's quite complicated, especially with the math. Then we can see we have a bus voltage transformer. Now that would be uh, used for the different protection systems that ha hang off the line. Or uh, in this case, I've also got say under frequency. So the whole idea of under frequency is when there's not enough power in the system, the frequency starts to uh, starts to sag, starts to drop. When it, when it hits a predefined limit, she'll trip. But it'll sort of hit the timing before it goes to allow networks to manually go ahead and try and find the power savings it requires. And now that system is called load shedding. So you'll often see when there's not enough power in the system, you'll hear that the power company's had to load shed. Uh, it's based on frequency. So they'll uh, drop so many meg, megawatts of energy until the frequency gets up to a stable position because if it goes too far, they can't control the network properly and it'll collapse. All right, so now you can see we've got the transformer sections. Now, you'll see the breaker on the left has these little cans. Now, that those little cans there, uh, they've got CTs in them. All right, this one here is a post type. So the CTs are there, but uh, the circuit breaker on this side doesn't have any CTs in there. So we pair it with the post type CT. Now, to protect the transformer, we have... A Buckholtz relay up here. Now that looks at, that does like gas sampling on the of the oil, so it, it can start to see if it's breaking down inside. So that's what that sort of does. It takes samples as it goes through to the conservator, and then uh, you have a sort of a current differential system. Now that's like the line, but because a transformer has two different voltage levels, so two different potentials, it has two different currents. So to overcome this, you can balance it by having uh, the ratios match but not so they won't be the same but what, I'm, what I mean by matching is you'll have say one at say a thousand and one at a hundred if it's like a ten to one ratio that way the current is the same and uh, so what would happen is if there's a fault inside the transformer and the power that's uh, going into the transformer is not going out the other side uh, then you know you got a problem she trips out now 
you can see it would trip the brown it would trip the through the brown connection it'll trip both circuit breakers all right and then for all these little gray ones i'm i've hooked up to scada so the scada i don't know if you know much about scada but the whole idea of scada is to allow you to remote control and monitor what's happening keep going along so we have two transformers both of the same protection system all right now we get to the 33 side of the transformer okay so again we have bus protection now like i said before uh, anything that goes in to the bus has to go out of the bus okay so again we've got some more breakers and uh, isolators and vts now what i've done is i've changed it I changed this one a little bit so two are the same one's different now this one or these all have synchronization circuit breaker management relays like i said about the transmission line side except i've also got earth fault again current differential so this is the line that goes straight to a zone sub well like a smaller substation where i am we call them zone subs so we have term terminal stations and zone substations so there you go um so that would be line would be protected by a current differential system uh this, the circuit breaker management relay would handle the auto reclose so if there's a fault it would try uh, and close again to see if it's cleared close again to see if it's cleared until it locks itself out we also have synchronization to make sure it's in its place but we also also have earth fault with some vts is they'll have a winding on it called dadn so if you have three vts so three single phase vts or a, a three phase vt but uh, one winding is sort of a broken delta or open delta what you can have is if there's a fault across that open point you'll have a voltage develop so when it's out of balance like there's a fault for example and one line goes down so the voltage dips in that one so then the the vt will develop a voltage across those open terminals and you can measure that one and that's you can use that for earth fault anyway that's the dadn circuit some have that okay so i'm not going to go through what happens in the smaller substations because it's pretty much the same thing except a lot smaller but what i did do is i've put like the feeder that goes out to the street to the houses and stuff and that one would have like an overcurrent earth fault on there and then you'd have it get to the transformers and then from from the transformer to the house you'd have a fuse or a circuit breaker but where i am you have a server a mains fuse and that protects the mains or it protects the network from a fault within the house now if this video helped you hit that like button hit that subscribe button uh, there'll be more videos coming out soon with more in-depth information that i think might be relevant if you're into this sort of stuff all right thanks for watching